Yeah. Good evening. Good Tuesday evening here on the East Coast. No, another five minutes, Mark, you need? You want me to wait? I can't. I've got so much to do. But there's replay if you need to catch up. <laughs> anyway, sorry I'm a couple minutes late. I was getting up the presentation and all, and it wasn't cooperating, you know. So anybody who uh, follows the uh, channel bingo cards, that would be a tech issue. Check it off. Yeah. Oh, I get it, Mark. Yeah. I'm in a good mood today. I'm in a very good mood. Um, mostly because it's no longer Monday, all right? Everybody knows I have an aversion to Mondays. I don't start the week off well, Monday. Mm -mm. But today we have quite a few cases to talk about. They all have these legal things that irk me, like irk me in some positive things too that I'd like to focus on. Um, they are tidbits of cases that uh, may not have covered the whole trial, okay? Uh, but more things have come up about it and little interesting things that I had found, which those of you that follow my true crime here on this channel uh, know that I don't like to focus on, you know, the most salacious or the, the, the media presence uh, cases as much. I, I have my quirky little thing that I just like to find some interesting aspect of it that piques my attention and gets me to focus on it and so i'd like to point some of those out in these these five cases that are familiar names um if you looked at the thumbnail which i normally just put up the pictures of the person and then the description will tell you who but we have a little bit on michelle traconis today we have carly russell we have alec baldwin Adam Montgomery, and of course, uh, P. Diddy has been all over the news. And, well, there's an issue I want to talk about like that. Not because he's all over the news. Well, how we got here and how that kind of plays out and uh, my thoughts on that. But uh, let's just, let me just go through comments real quick before we start. And while I'm looking through the comments, uh, where do you guys want to start? Out of the five I listed, what do you think you want to start with? Because I'll leave it up to you. Otherwise, I'm going to go in order. Hey, Mark. Oh, it's good to see you. And how's the voice? Well, I was going to ask you guys that. How's it sound? Because I've been feeling good the last couple of days, and I think it sounds pretty much back to normal. I think I'm getting there. I think I'm ready to start finishing up my recordings. <laughs> it's good. I'm um, sorry. Oh, look at the trees. It's good to see you. It's raining and crappy here. I'm sick, but I'm in a good mood. I'm glad you're in a good mood. I'm sorry you're not feeling well, and I hope that you'll be feeling better much soon, very soon. Oh, hey. Hey, Art from the Utopians, Art Against Ignorance. How you doing? Hey, Claire, I'd love to hang around, but I'm at work. They're doing deliveries. Well, don't, don't get yourself in trouble, okay? Don't get yourself in trouble at all. And thank you for stopping in. We appreciate it. Oh, hey, Racket Couch. How are you today? I hope well. I'm partial to Baldwin. Oh, you want to hear about him? Yeah. Well, we could start with him if nobody else says anything. Hey, Shil. Good to see you. Thank you so much for being here and uh, ranching, you know. Oh, where's our banner reminder fish nerd? Well, I guess I'm subbing in, so put on the banner. And here he comes. Thank you very much for the reminder. <laughs> God, why I can't remember that. I was doing so well. I was doing so well. Oh, looks like Fish Fishner just showed up. Looks like a banner day today. Yes, he does. Uh, actually, she'll just reminded me. Hello, April. Welcome. Uh, and to everyone else coming in as I'm talking, uh, I welcome you. I greet you. I'm so glad that you're here even if I don't call out your name or pull up your comment, believe me. I do go back and look at all the comments after, and I do and I do actually appreciate all of your efforts and that you're here and that you want to contribute. I really do. All right. So, well, since Rocket Couch mentioned Baldwin, let me just get ready. I'll just put up a picture of him. I mm. get his picture up. 
Hey, mm, well, we don't need them that big, do we? Okay, is is that good enough? I don't think we need them that big. I mean, it is Al Baldwin. Everybody knows who he is, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, so, oh, hello, Jean. It's not your sultry voice, but you still stand, sound great. Groping the chat, please file by to receive yours. Thank you very much, and thank you for groping the chat. You know, they look forward to it. I appreciate you being here, Jean. And uh, I'm hoping that my voice comes back 100, but we'll see. Like, we'll see. It's getting there. It's getting there. Anyway, on Alec Baldwin, we know that Alec Baldwin is facing charges the same as uh, Hannah Gutierrez faced and was just found guilty of in um, actually causing the death of Hyla Hutchinson by firing the gun with live ammunition on the set of Rust. It's been a lot of uh, controversy back and forth in regards to who brought the live ammo, what that we saw a lot in Hannah Gutierrez's uh, trial. Um, she is actually appealing and she's actually requesting a new trial. And we could talk about that on another day. But today we want to talk about Alec Baldwin, who has actually, as we thought he would, uh, filed a motion to dismiss. OK, now you would expect that, right? I mean, you definitely, definitely would expect that he would file. OK, um, in um. For those of you, here is the actual uh, link to a video on it that I found and watched uh, that was quite interesting, uh, if you're interested in following up later. But actually, you know, Alan Al Baldwin's motion to dis dismiss, I wanted to talk about it because, like, he said some things in here. Um, Well, to me, they had some, some words in it that I think he's, like, trying to, you know, get some get some real play on here on some other issues or uh, particularly um in the indictment or um, to in in the actual motion to dismiss the indictment uh Alec Baldwin's uh lawyers actually claim that this is an abuse of the system and an abuse of an innocent person whose rights have been trampled on to the extreme it goes on to say that the prosecution unfairly painted Alec Baldwin as, as, as with so much incredulous false accusations that the jury couldn't do, you know, didn't have all of the information that they needed to actually put forward the indict, indictment. They said that the prosecution presented a one-sided, a one-sided presentation of the case. To the grand jury to get the indictment. Now I'm going to say that again. This was to a jury to get the indictment to actually bring charges forward. In the prosecution, is the only one who's presenting the evidence. Um, so I ask you, lawyers, for Alec Baldwin, how could it not be one-sided? They're presenting their case on what they think he did wrong. If you get a chance to defend that if charges are brought. This is to show the evidence that they have to see if a reasonable person could say with probable cause that he may or may not have done what they're accusing him of doing. It is not to lay out a tit-for-tat case of both sides where he's presumed innocent and gets to defend himself. That comes next. Before that, they get to hear the evidence that the prosecution has put together and why they want to charge him. That's how it goes. To actually portray it that the prosecution, in doing their due diligence in the job that they are supposed to do, is presenting a one-sided story. Well, I go, duh. Like, am I wrong? Did that just, I mean, that just hit me as so obscure and so absurd. Not only obscure, like, why is that the argument? Really, that's what you're going to go with? Alec Baldwin's being slandered. Because he's really a great guy. You should not take his name in vain. In It's one-sided. Mm. All right. I got a little chuckle out of it. Sorry. And that's why we're talking about it. Because that motion. Well, I think he needs to pay a little more money to his attorneys. Let's just say. Hmm. Anyway. 
uh, Alec Baldwin is going up on involuntary manslaughter, which are the same charges that Hannah Gutierrez went in, which are going to have a fine of, what, $5,000 and 18 months in jail, max, okay? Now, he's going up on multiple other charges. Like, he can only be found guilty of one of them when it comes to the manslaughter. He's got two counts of manslaughter, okay? And for Baldwin, uh, mm, It's the same as with Hannah Gutierrez. It's whether there was intent or not, okay? And it's really based on court documents about negligent use of a firearm, okay? And an alternative count described as involuntary monster without due caution or circumspection, which is detailed as an act committed with the total disregard or indifference to the safety of others, which is what they found Hannah Gutierrez guilty of, in which we're going to talk about later, involved the jury question that they had that didn't get answered. Mm. Baldwin has denied pulling the trigger on the weapon in a previous interview with CNN, which would broadcast everywhere. Okay. However, prosecution had an expert reconstruct and said that that gun could not have fired unless he pulled the trigger. Uh, this is part of why his previously dismissed charges were brought forward again. His statement that he couldn't have pulled the trigger in the reconstruction of the gun, in actual further examination of the gun, actually finding that that could not have been true. Um, and so they're wondering why we would go so far reasonably. And I'm just like, this is a little bit of speculation here on my part, or, or let's just say opinion, that of course you're going to wonder, well, why is he so like saying he he didn't, he didn't, he didn't. And he's not the one that put the live ammo in the gun, and he's not the one responsible for live ammo being on the test. But here would he, here's where he is responsible. Number one, he's a person holding a gun. Everyone holding a gun. And this is not just like my belief. This has been every single person I have talked to says the same thing. Anyone handling a gun has a certain responsibility to the safety of everyone around him. During Hannah Gutierrez's uh, trial, we saw multiple video clips that painted Alec Baldwin in a bad light, which I do believe he could complain about, of uh, just snips here and there of him waving the gun around, not taking any consideration to where he was, you know, all of this. But in Alec Baldwin's defense, he claims, but those are props, and I know they're not loaded, and I'm they're counting on the people to do their job so that nobody's at risk. Like, I don't have to be the one to protect everybody else. They do. But here's where the line is that I see that Alec Baldwin is facing a problem. He's not just an actor in the film. He's a producer. He's in charge of hiring the people in some way of performing those duties to protect everyone on set. The armorer, the prop master. Everyone. Producers are responsible for this kind of thing. Producers are responsible for some of the conduct that happens on the set. There were multiple violations. Producers themselves have already paid the production company a fine in regards to not following safety regulations in that state in regards to the filming of this film. They've already had a mass walk-off of people who worked for them, saying the, the conditions on the set were unsafe. Alec Baldwin is being charged for manslaughter, but he's trying to act like he's just an actor wielding a gun, and he has no responsibility here. He has actually come out in that same interview and said he sleeps well at night. He knows he did nothing wrong. Now, David Hollis already pled guilty to mishandling of a firearm in an unsafe way that caused danger to all this. And he took it on the chin, knowing he handled that gun and didn't do due diligence. And he got a, sit, a, a prison sentence of a few months, of, uh, which was pushed down to probation, which he did. Okay, but he's got that guilty charge on him. Hannah Gutierrez decided to go not guilty. She doesn't feel she is the one who brought the ammo onto set. And she doesn't feel she feels she did check the gun, and she does uh, feels 
that she was not guilty, although the jury decided otherwise, that she had a responsibility. And many people that I've talked to in regards to this case feel the same way, that there is accountability by more than one person in regards to this case. So when I saw the motion to dismiss, well, let's be clear. It is not unusual to file a motion to dismiss. Everybody that gets charges on them is going to try to get the case tossed. That's step one. Okay, It's not a surprise what that that he filed the motion to dismiss the indictment in the case okay what's surprising is the angle he did you know they, they're just piling on on him because they can and well let's just say i don't think it's an abuse of the system because the victim's family helena hutchinson's son husband friends Everyone on that set who saw what happened, who has been traumatized by it, who has to deal with it, who now feels unsafe doing their job, feels a great sense of distrust in the system of securing the set in regards to guns and ammunition. I mean, this has repercussions and there needs to be accountability much more than just. Um, whether or not he pulled the trigger, his actions alone. In regards to Hannah Gutierrez's trial, it came forward that uh, she wasn't comfortable addressing him in how he should be actually handling that gun. He was um, loud, obnoxious, yelling, determined, uh, ordered people around. He didn't act like just an actor or a diva. He acted like a producer on that set as the employer of those around him. And that's why I say I'm a little bit surprised he's not taking a little bit more accountability. Baldwin's lawyers denounced the case in, in that court, saying that um, prosecutors are publicly dragging Baldwin through the cesspool created by their improprieties without any regard to the fact that serious criminal charges have been hanging over his head for two and a half years. Get out the tiny violin, Alec. I don't want to hear it. If Hannah has to face the charges, David Halls has to face the charges, civil suits that you are a part of are being settled because you know wrong was done. Why are you acting like such a victim here? Alec Baldwin is not a victim in this case. Alec Baldwin was a producer of the film and has some responsibility to what happens there. You don't get to make all the money and not take any accountability. It's a two-sided sword. Anyway, let me go look at the chat. That's what I have to say about that. <laughs> let me just see if you guys have some questions. Rocket Couch says, wait, so they're upset that the prosecution didn't also argue for the defense? Exactly. That's what first keyed me off, Rocket Couch. What? Like, what kind of a motion to defense is that? Like, motion to dismiss, rather. Like, yeah, we weren't there to tell our side. They said a one-sided story that's actually in the motion to dismiss. The prosecution told a one-sided story. Of course they did, boo-boo. Of course they did. They did their job. They're not supposed to plead your case. Mm -hmm. Leo does. it sounds very similar <laughs> to some of the defenses I have heard. Mm. Hello, Sin. It's good to see you. Oh, Liam, thank you. You made coffee? I'm having coffee myself. And thank you for saying the banner looks good. It's all. There was a little bit of a delay. I can't say I remembered on my own. She'll have to remind me. Yeah. Hmm. Fish nerd, I don't think there's a specific uh, bingo card for today, but most times there's overflow. <laughs> hey, Rocket Couch, I see you addressed that. Thank you very much. And uh, feel free to make a bingo card for everything on the channel. Uh, people have been having a lot of fun with it, and uh, I, I find it quite humorous. Yeah. 
I think we are seeing his lawyers throwing some stuff out compared to Hannah's to justify their higher price tags, perhaps. But he's faced the same charges and the same consequences. So, you know, I think that during that trial, you're right. Um, there was some stuff that came out about Alec that makes him look really bad. And I'm sure it will be played again uh, by the prosecution. It's part of their case. Um, he did not seem to show due diligence in that's part of the charge. Not like, did you have foresight? Could you see an accident happen? Are you the one that did this? No, that's not the charge. The charge is, would a reasonable person have taken a step to prevent this from happening? Uh, not pulling the trigger or not lying about pulling the trigger would be one. Not flashing that gun and pointing it at people all over. There was multiple sequences of film shown that during filming, when they weren't even actually filming, when they were in between shots, he was waving that gun around at people. He's laying at the ground. He was using it as a pointer. Um, if he says that this is actually going against him, well, it is, okay? But that's not prosecution's fault. That's, you did it, dude. Like, you didn't show due diligence. Like, you're going to have to take it on the chin uh, for that. Exactly. Welcome back. Good to see you. I, I'm telling you, yeah. Okay, now, what would you like to talk about next if there's nothing else about Alec Baldwin? But that was the legal thing that really kind of went, I went, hmm, what? I did kind of a Scooby-Doo. What, 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 like what? Like I did a Scooby-Doo on that one, absolutely. Like, you gotta be kidding me. Is this where they're going with that? I don't really see how um, prejudicing, prejudicing, prejudicing the, the public against him by him appearing in the other trial, which of course he would because he's part of the act that happened that the charges are being uh, placed on everyone for. Of course he's going to be part of it. He's a producer of it, it, the film clips of it. He had part to do with it. It's going to be shown, you know. Yeah, I, I just don't see. Yeah, one-sided story that's out there. The other side of the story are Alex's own words. I don't call it a one-sided story when they're using his own words and his own actions. Like, they're showing him. His side's out there. It's just not very flattering. Hmm. All right. So, what do you guys want to talk about next? Traconas? Russell? Or P. Diddy? Or do you want to do Adam Montgomery? That one's uh, kind of short. We can perhaps do that one rocket couch says i might make the true crime and legal update bingo slightly less silly than the others but i don't think that'll diminish it by much probably more emphasis on bad legal manners kind of stuff i'll workshop it a bit i appreciate that bad legal manners is, is definitely one of my things in there and yeah you can um, reference some of the things. I know sometimes we take a lighter view on here. I get a bit snarky and I got my opinion about things. And I do count on dark humor sometimes to get me through the most troubling parts. So I'm going to bring up Adam Montgomery, Nick. And this is one that is very troubling for me. Very, very troubling for me. Um, Well, basically, also, it is in a way... A good thing. Um, I want to bring it up because sometimes when something really, really bad happens, sometimes legally legislation can move forward to help. Now, we saw that when we, we talked about um, Gene Carroll's case in New York against Trump for rape, and he was not convicted of rape, but he was uh, convicted of a sexual assault charge. Because of the way that the law was written in regards to the charge for rape. That, I think we've talked about this in the past, I was very pleased to say that that legislation came through to change the way that law was written, to change the way the charge of rape is actually addressed and made it broader so that it encapsulated the actual um, incident and it no longer had to just require the word. It, it had to be by a penis. Okay. 
which was a good move for New York. And it was a good progression forward because so many cases had been tossed because of this. Um, now, I was happy about that, um, that that legislation moved forward and moved forward so quickly. Well, now we're going to talk about Adam Montgomery and a, a law that's on the books in New Hampshire since 2016 that says he needs to attend his sentencing. Okay. There's a fine for those just a short scenario in the regards of the the murder of his daughter Harmony Montgomery, which he was convicted guilty of. He did not attend the trial except for the first day left. Okay, he he did not attend. He didn't get to hear any of the testimony against him. He didn't. Uh, the victim's family did not get to see him at all or have him face any of the repercussions. But that's a sentencing. The victim's family and those that love them have a right to do their impact statements and address the guilty directly. And so this law is there because for him not to attend his own sentencing would violate their rights. I mean, it has to be equal play. Okay. If he doesn't want to attend a trial, that's one thing. Okay. But he has to face them. Now, when you attend a trial, it's so that you can face your accusers, so you can defend yourself. If you chose not to do that, that's one thing. But for the sentencing, the prosecution has actually filed a motion to compel the judge to make Adam Montgomery come to the sentencing because he didn't come to the trial at all. And they figure he's not going to take any accountability. He's not going to come. He's going to uh, try to deny it. But there is a law on the book that hasn't been tested since 2016 that um, they have not had to enforce, you know, because there's two sides of this. Are we going to bring him in shackled against his will, like on a stretcher because he refuses to walk? Um, that has happened. Okay. The court can do things like that. Um, but the law is there. What are they going to do if he refuses? Can they force him? Will there be a fine? Will there be a penalty? Okay. One of the things the prosecution has done is to alert the judge of the standing of the law on the books and that they really, that the victims want to make impact statements and that Adam Montgomery needs to be there. And he should be there. Now, this is a hot debate back and forth. Many people get very agitated, excited, um, boisterous when they speak on it. I've been watching clips here and there, and every lawyer they bring up to talk about this gets very emotional. He should be there, they say. But then again, how do we force? How do we enforce that law? Is it just a penalty? Is it additional sentencing? Is it contempt of court? Like, what are we going to do about it if he says no? So what New Hampshire legislatures have done is they want to actually reinforce the 2016 law and make it mandatory. No ifs. He doesn't even get to ask, asked if he wants to be there or not. It's mandatory. He's got to be there. And then the jail would just like, like, break. like they actually want to beef up that law. So they are already in the process of fast tracking this law to get this legislation solid because they were so offended by the actions of Adam Montgomery and they felt for the family of Harmony and the friends in, in everyone who loved her in this whole case just put everybody up on it. The audacity of him not to want to face anyone is what they were focusing on, you know. And so it, to me, it became quite interesting. Number one, because like he didn't want to be there. He's been called a coward, this, that, and the other thing. The trial went on. He was still guilty. It didn't do anything. Um, you know, uh, I don't know if he thought it would portray him more innocent, that he couldn't hear about the things people would say that he did to his daughter or whatever. Um, but it all, but it, seemed to go the other way. Most people that I spoke with felt that it showed he, he just had a lack of accountability and he just didn't want to deal with it, that it's something that he did and he just doesn't want to be reminded about it. He doesn't want to take any accountability for it whatsoever. It's too painful for him. 
uh, to deal with it. Well, Mark says, the only way I'll attend a trial is as a juror. Okay. I, I, I understand that. Hopefully you don't get, uh, I don't think you'd be, <laughs> I don't think there's any charges against you or anything that you have to worry about it, you know. Hmm. Here we go. You have a jury service again next month? Oh, Liam. Hmm. Actually, I think Liam's looking forward to that. I think he make a good juror. He likes weighing everything out. He does. He says, in fact, I see it as part of the privilege of living in a country where we have due process of law. I wish more people thought that way. I, I do, Liam. No, I wouldn't mind being a juror either. I think it, it would be a duty. It would be a duty if you, you know, but all this uh, for Adam Montgomery. I don't know how you guys feel, but I think he should attend his sentencing. I think he has a right not to actually attend the trial. After all, it's his right that they're protecting on that end. His right to face his accusers under in the United States on how we do uh, try to balance the accused and the accuser in the rights between the victims and, and those that are being accused. Mm -hmm. And I could see if he doesn't want to be there that he has a right not to, you know, because he, he's there to face his accusers, to hear the accusations and to defend himself, okay, during the trial. But at the sentencing, once he is found guilty, then it becomes more about the rights of the victims and the impact statements in due process and justice. Adam Montgomery was found guilty. And now it is part of the process that he hears what that did to others, what his actions did to others. This is part of our justice system. And I think he needs to be compelled to be there. And I'm glad prosecution thought ahead to file that motion to alert the judge of, you know, that they were going to push for the law from 2016 that says he must be there and not give Adam Montgomery the choice. Because let's be honest, the victims of this crime don't have a choice. They have to live with it every day. The loss of harmony. Adam Montgomery should not have the choice not to show. Not for the victim's impact statements. He needs to be there. He needs to hear. This is part of their justice. This starts their healing process. He has no right now that he has been found guilty to deny them that. Prior to conviction, his rights were more were, were laid out. He gets the faces accused or not. He gets to face his accusers or not. But, you know, now he just wants to stay and hide. And I'm glad that they're doing something to prevent that or change that. Hello, Mousy and Juju and Mipit. Yeah. Juju, I agree. He should have to hear what the victims have to say. And it's an impact statement. And it's for the purpose of addressing him. Not the court, not everybody else that knows about it. Him, the guilty person, the perpetrator of the crime. It is to address the, him. And he needs to be there. All right. Well, that was Adam Montgomery. <laughs> okay. And it just, um, when I saw that motion to compel, it lit a fire on me, you know. And then I, I researched and found out, you know, that that they are actually working on the legislation. Now, I put this link below. OK, um, but lawmakers have are working on that bill now. And here's the article in regards to it and more information that you can find out about it. Uh, it's going to require uh, guilty parties for, to attain sentencing to here unless it's excused by the judge. 
and there may be reasons okay like we're not being unreasonable we're we are trying to balance it out you know but unless his rights are compromised in some way or there is some physicality or a danger to those around okay that that could be if it's going to be a burden or a danger i can understand okay if you've got one of these um hmm, very violent offenders um who have been threatening and you know doing things like like the guy who jumped at the judge like it once you've done something like that i could see where the judge could say that that person doesn't need to be present for anything <laughs> i could see them saying that if they've already proven to be unable to contain themselves and cause physical harm to others like bailiffs and um uh even even the victims that or that are making the statements like if, if it would be abusive or violent in, in any nature i could see a judge stepping in in saying that he would not uh, be able to attend. Okay. Um, well, yeah. Mm. I agree, Juju. The victims have been silenced long enough. They are quiet during the trial, right? They're not allowed to speak unless they are a witness or something, and then they only answer questions. They don't get to say how they feel or how it affected them. Victims have been silent long enough and had to go through the whole trial. He should have to go through the sentencing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, hey, hey, hey. I don't know why Trees is stalking anybody. I don't think so. <laughs> but <laughs> whatever, Beck. Uh, I'm sure it's a friendly stalking. <laughs> if, if it's a stalking at all. Indeed, indeed. Um, you're cracking me up. Okay, so we have three more. Anybody have a preference? You want to do P. Diddy? You want to do Carly Russell? Or you want to do Michelle Traconis? Hmm. <laughs> you're not helping trees. <laughs> that kind of adds to it. Um. Oh, Liam called it with P. Diddy. Okay. This is, a, this is a hot miss. I don't think anybody's really going to like what I have to say about this one, actually. Hmm. We'll, we'll stall. We'll stall. Okay. Um, mm. Okay. Well, unless you've been under a rock, which some of us, we don't follow stuff on social media that much. So you could not know. And I'm, I'm not really teasing you if you don't. Well, P. Diddy is in the news right now, all over. Well, let's just be clear. Oh, P. Diddy, Sean Combs. Can I just call him Sean Combs? Because, like, that's his real name. You all know him as Diddy, okay? I'll either say Sean Combs or Diddy. Diddy's been everywhere in, in 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 the mainstream media for months okay it started with civil lawsuits uh cassie ventura one day lawsuit came up like filing all this salacious awful accusations in there of a lot of misdeeds abuse in violence in illegal drug trafficking all, all kinds of stuff all over the all okay one day he settled with her boom that case got withdrawn jane doe uh, two more cases filed in, in New York after that. But the one that really hit the news recently, okay, um, was the one, the one against a, a fellow rapper that was actually working with him, um, Rodney James, okay. Oh, wait, is it Rodney? Hmm. No. Hold on. Cassie filed the first one. Oh, yeah, it's Jones, not James. Sorry. His rapping name, his rapper name actually is Little Rod. His name is Rodney Jones. In the end of uh, February, he put out another claim. And in that one, there was illegal drug trafficking. There was illegal, there was guns. Okay. There was human trafficking kind of accusations made. Um, There was uh, forced abuse issues. There was... uh mental torment, um, harassment, threatening, uh, just 
can I say thug like behavior? Okay, just all all of this ag against Combs and others that work for him in his record label in uh, his businesses. But they say that that Combs had sexually harassed, drugged, and threatened Rodney Jones for more than a year. Okay, from September to November, from September 2022 to November of 2023. Okay, now the reason I'm mentioning this particular civil suit in New York is because it seems like the it kind of could have fueled what happened recently, which for those of us, uh, the raids that happened yesterday um, in Los Angeles in Miami at P. Diddy's homes. Okay. Now, there's been all of these accusations, these civil suits floating around. In what piques my interest here is raids don't just happen, and raids don't happen because of civil suits. Uh uh. Raids happen when there's an investigation working towards criminal charges. Okay. Yeah, I said that. Mm -hmm. Yep, I did. I said it. Criminal charges. Um, that raid in Los Angeles and Miami was well well coordinated with Homeland Security and the local forces in both states. Mm -hmm. Okay. They do not raid your home unless they think a crime has been committed. And it's not because he's a bad boy or a thug. They're talking criminal charges here. OK, now I'm not going to say that those criminal charges are necessarily against Sean Combs. OK, because in these civil cases, also his sons are mentioned and other people involved in his company. And let's be honest, the homes are owned in the company's names anyway. You know, most people with lots of money don't put things in a single name like their own. They're owned by corporations and all. There's tax structures and things that have to go. Financial planning that is done. Okay. So there's more than one person tied to both of those homes. Okay. Yes, they are the residents of Sean Combs, P. Diddy. And he is the owner of that company that owns these homes, that's on these homes. Okay, and his sons list live there. As a matter of fact, in Los Angeles, I believe it was Los Angeles. And please, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. If you heard different, both his sons were there, and they were escorted out. And there was a lot about them being handcuffed and everything. But major reporting, and from what I've seen and checked into, that's standard. When you're removing people from a home that's being raided to protect, let's be clear here to protect evidence in a criminal investigation. Why do raids happen? Criminal charges, protection of evidence to get it, okay? They already have a good idea where what they're looking for. They already have a good idea what they're looking for and they need to make sure that it stays there in pristine, whatever. They want to, they want to protect the evidence, the security evidence, okay? So, both of his sons were escorted out as, as well as others in handcuffs like, like out because, well, there's been accusations of firearms. And there's been known to be firearms in the presence. This would not be the first time P. Diddy was associated with some kind of firearm claim, right? Re remember the nightclub shooting with J-Lo, all of that? This was years ago, many, many, many years ago. But, I mean, thug life, yes. <laughs> it's not that uncommon to have his name associated with guns and stuff. So, of course, the people are being escorted. It's, it's standard procedure from what I've read and what I've heard being portrayed in a lot of the news reporting, in talking to law enforcement officers, in the, the way it goes. Uh, no one has been arrested. Let's be clear. PDD has not been arrested. No one has been arrested and no charges have been filed as of a few hours ago when I scoured the internet. No charges have been filed that we know of, okay? They said, oh, P. Diddy is on a plane and he's trying to leave for the Bahamas or whatever. No, he was actually at the Miami airport walking around. Oh, TMZ put out a video showing him walking around at the airport 
in that some people in his party were held at customs uh, being questioned about some stuff in that he was waiting for them. He may have been coming back from somewhere, but he was in Miami yesterday. Uh, physically, they have film of him, like, you know, walking around on the sidewalk, you know. It's so, like, rumor and speculation is all over the place, but there are no charges yet. We don't even know who the target of the investigation is. We just know the securing of the evidence in a criminal investigation that we don't even know what the criminal investigation is focused on. There are rumors that it's, hum it's human trafficking. There are rumors that it's the illicit uh, drugs in weaponry. Um, I don't know. Neither do any of us. Neither do anybody who's reporting on it out there because they haven't made a charge yet. <laughs> so that's my point. That's all speculation on what it's about except for the fact that there's a criminal investigation where they needed to secure evidence. And so they raided the homes of Sean Combs in Miami and in Los Angeles. It's also true that Sean Combs has multiple allegations against him in civil lawsuits. And for those of you interested, I did put it in the description, but for those of you in the chat, there is the link to an article that breaks down several of the accusations against him in the civil lawsuits. Okay, more women came forward. There was Joel Dickerson, Joy Dickerson Neal. There was a Jane Doe. One of the Jane Doe's that came forward says that she was a minor when her assault happened and that her assault invo involved more than Sean Combs, uh, more than one person. Other persons were named. In Rodney Jones's uh, civil case, he names many, many people, not just Sean Combs, okay? Um, and this has been going on for the good part of, like, the latter part of 2023 forward to the good, you know, the whole beginning of 2024, okay? Uh, I would like to mention that one of P. Diddy's attorneys was Sean Hawley at the time when the first civil lawsuits all came out. Um, she was speaking. Uh, she said that every allegation in these things is pure fiction. Mm -hmm. P. Diddy, at the time that the lawsuits happened, said, and I quote, let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. That came out of P. Diddy back in, I just believe it was late December, early January. Okay, so Homeland Security issued a statement yesterday that they raided Diddy's Los Angeles and Miami homes. And it just said, earlier today, Homeland Security investigates New York uh, investigations, executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from home, uh, Homeland Security in Los Angeles, Miami, and other local law enforcement partners will provide further information as it becomes available. Like, there's not much out there as to what the actual accusations are going to be, except for what we've already read in the civil cases. But civil cases are not criminal. In civil cases, you don't get to raid people's home. Okay? You don't do that. This is an ongoing investigation. Criminal investigation. Now, P. Diddy put out a statement today, statement on behalf of Sean Combs, and it's only fair to put his words out there too, because everybody's running with what it could be, and no one knows. We just know the raids have happened. And civil lawsuits, well, you get to make a lot of salacious accusations, but remember, none of them have gone to trial, and they haven't proved a damn thing. So let's be clear, Sean Combs is innocent until he's proven guilty. And a civil suit is really about getting your story out there or getting some mm, something from someone you felt they did something wrong to you. And in most cases, it's money or reputation or an apology. You know, I hear you there. You don't have to shout it, Darth. I know like you like to use that message, you could put that message back up, not in ca uh, caps, because I was actually going to show that message 
um it is true that sean combs okay is uh got an ongoing investigation although he hasn't been charged but they also a, a bone of contention is that no one on the epstein client list and they know that epstein was doing bad things and just lane maxwell has been found guilty of these things but the client list no one no one has been brought forward on any charges in regards to that you know so it's like i hear you darth about that one let that sink in no one is looking into the oh well I, we don't we can't say that they're not looking into it because we don't know what's going on behind the scenes but let's just say publicly no mention of the client list or anybody on it in charges or investigation has been anywhere that i can find okay all right let's just let me just read uh, Sean Combs' statement, and then we'll go through the chat, okay? Yeah. Yesterday, there was a gross overuse of military-level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs' residences. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Mr. Combs was never detained but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. Despite media speculation, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested, nor has their ability to travel been restricted in any way. This unprecedented ambush, paired with an advanced, coordinated media presence, leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs, and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. There has been no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. Aaron Dwyer, who is uh, one of P. Diddy's attorney. Okay. Um, I'm glad he put out a statement because uh, he should. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's true. He's innocent until proven guilty. Okay. And there are all the civil attacks. And where is all of this coming from? Well, they could have all the stuff. I'm not saying that they don't, you know. But I am saying that the media just goes crazy about these kind of stuff, you know. He is a powerful, influential, and successful person. Okay. And we love to just put all of that stuff on celebrities, right? Mm -hmm. I will admit, I expect better of Alec Baldwin. I expect him to take accountability for something that he did. I absolutely do. You know, it, we look at celebrities a little bit differently, don't we? You know, it's like anyone would want to push back and say, I'm not guilty of it. Not me. You know, well, I want them to do the right thing. And I don't think it's the right thing to automatically uh, form an opinion about what's going on here with P. Diddy because there's not, there's just not enough there. Yeah, raids happen. Raids happen to secure evidence in criminal charges. They say that there's an ongoing investigation. Being under investigation does not automatically equal guilt, okay? It, it means that they think something's going on and they're going to figure it out. They're, they're, they're something that is of substantial enough claim that it needs to be checked out. And human trafficking is a claim that they would want to check out. It is something that all over our country we are trying to enforce against, which is why I understand why Darth, Darth Hideous made the comment, like why not the, the Epstein client list? Why are they not getting information from those people about the things that happened on that island? Why were you on that island? What happened while you were there? And what do you know about the organization and how we can shut things like this down? Like, why is that not happening? And if it did happen, why aren't you talking about it? Like, I think I would feel more comfortable if I knew that those conversations happened with the people on that list. Okay. And yet they didn't have anything to charge them with. If they were more, I understand that law, in, law enforcement often has to act behind the scenes in the dark. The less we know, the better their investigation because we can't interfere with it. Right. We can't like, do anything. And if we're guilty parties of it, we can't change anything or get rid of evidence or interfere in any other way or obstruct. Okay. So I, I get that. 
but the uncomfortableness of having this Epstein client list thrown around every time something comes up about human trafficking, it's getting uncomfortable. And I think maybe we, if we had a little bit of answers in regards to what they were doing about it, or if there was even still an ongoing investigation in regards to it, it'd feel a little more comfortable. I mean, myself, I'm not, how does anybody else feel about it? I'm not sure. But for me, yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. for the safety of whom um oh wait often they execute search warrants in the middle of the nights for safety reasons um i when they when it's a known violent crime i agree but i don't know if that's like a standard thing or anything in like dart says for the safety of who like because the officer i think for the officers and all i think the reason that they take people out of the home in coughs and and secure them off is so that they can talk to them and for the safety of all of those involved because it's a very large home number one they've got a lot they've got a lot of people there going in and out and they want to keep everybody secure the way the family and anybody who was in the residence um employees and whatnot uh visitors um, all to one side and all in um, the homeowners and all, it, it's not uncommon that they would secure them. Okay. Uh, to the area, whether they should have been coughed or not. I don't know. Uh, from what I, from what I read, that was standard protocol. Any uh, people were trying to make it like it was uh, a presumption of guilt that the, the sons were somehow involved in all of this. Not necessarily like they were there present when the raid happened and were escorted out onto the lawn, uh, handcuffed uh, to wait for questioning in for security because they're not going to have somebody like there the whole time. Okay. Not that they were considered a big threat, but they don't want a threat. Okay. Yeah. They may, they may have had it signed a few hours before executing the war. It looks like a concerted effort. It looks like Miami and uh, Los Angeles, uh, Homeland Security, were actually very involved in this and worked with law enforcement. I would imagine they both con uh, contacted their local law enforcement around the same time and coordinated this effort. It could, I, would, I would think it would take more than hours to coordinate it this large a raid and the reason um it's coordinated is that if you raided los angeles and then the next day raided miami there would be the opportunity for whatever evidence they were trying to secure secure to be either removed or got rid of or changed in some way in miami this way you secure whatever they're looking for um in a more unified way uh, so that there couldn't have been any interference that nobody else alone. And there would have been leaks and this and that and everything. It would have spread just like it did on wildfire. Can you imagine if they did one home? You know, it, it, they would have had uh, all of the media outside Miami waiting for that raid, you know, before they even like got there. There wouldn't even be a raid. It would just be like, knock, knock, you know, we're coming, <laughs> you know, but, uh, an advanced announcement, <laughs> basically. So like the coordination um had had to have happened I, I don't know if it would just take a couple of hours i would think more like a couple of days I, exactly there's so much there's on the southern border in known human trafficking going on there exactly human trafficking all over our country is a very hot topic and the fact that our own officials in customs and border patrol are explicitly involved there has been a lot about that too darth i get you and i get I get the the frustration, the frustration that we're going to hit like a, a very you know known target based on some civil accusations, but we don't know that that's what happened. For all we know, now let's be a little fair here. We're going to be, I'm going to be very fair here because although there's been rumors about P Diddy as long as I can remember, okay as long as I can remember from when he was a young man and started out when he was like a, he was like a, um, working for someone else in the record industry. Okay. All the way back then, when he first, first started, there's been rumors of all kinds of stuff all along. 
okay? But when your name is out there, rumors are just a thing that you just have to put on for when you are out here with this uh, celebrity and all that. People are going to do stuff, okay? So we don't know. A rumor is just a rumor. Rumors, gossip, speculation, none of that is facts. None of that is real information except for the fact that they exist, okay? There's been multiple cases. He's had multiple lawsuits. He's been dropped from many um, promoters for what they called shady business practices. Like he didn't hold his end of the bargain up. He manipulated things. Um, he's been he's, there's several accusations uh, out up there about him in the way he conducts his everyday business. Okay, well this this is something totally different, and we don't know if this ongoing investigation was even before the civil suits hit. Like the civil suits hit in December, we all know that it could take law enforcement quite some time to get stuff together. This could have been an ongoing investigation for quite a long period of time, and may even supersede the civil suits for all we know. OK, but with the information that's out there now, I don't blame P. Diddy for pushing back, saying this is just what people are saying over here in civil. And now it's just a miscarriage of adjustment. I feel affronted. I feel I feel they're pushing on me harder than necessary based on some unfounded allegations. I don't. I don't want to actually give that that much credit. I don't really think law enforcement. It's going to organize this bigger raid without having probable cause. And don't forget that here in America, there is the whole process of acquiring a search warrant, especially one of this nature, this coordinated through Homeland Security, in which is a which is used to protect us from threats and terrorism and everything in high risk situations like human trafficking. Okay, Homeland Security coordinated this with local reinforcement. They've had an investigation going. How long? We don't know. They don't talk about it. They're not supposed to. Okay. But it doesn't really seem common sense wise that this was an overnight thing. I don't think this raid was prompted by civil lawsuits. I seriously don't. I don't think that that's a proper assumption to me. That's not how the process works, the way I understand it. Um, in a little bit of reading, we'll let everybody know that too. Because of the way they need to acquire search warrants, to, because of all of the actual individual organizations that are involved, this could not have happened so quickly over a bunch of civil lawsuits. Okay, not unless they had concrete evidence of something really serious going on. Okay. Did, I, you know what? I kind of agree. I agree with this, um, Darth. P. Diddy is a scapegoat. Did he do it? Probably. Is this selective enforcement in scapegoating? Absolutely. I do believe there's something to that. I do believe that there are other cases that they're ignoring and then they're focusing on something like this. Perhaps it's because of the quantity of evidence they have and cooperation they have because maybe P. Diddy has more enemies willing to turn on him and provide evidence. Um, He's already got a civil assault out there. Listen, Rodney Jones didn't look good in that civil suit. He had to admit to being a victim of some things that are going to not make him quite popular in, in, in the music industry. And people are going to say sour grapes. You know, they're going to say this, they're going to say that. He didn't come off looking really good, but he put those accusations out there because he thinks it's wrong. Okay. Um, my point in mentioning that is that P. Diddy doesn't have a, a lot of people, like P. Diddy has a lot of people that are willing to say bad things about him. So the evidence that they may have could be piling up. So like, are they moving quite fast on it? I'm, I'm not sure. But that is one of the angles, though, that people are talking about. Mm -hmm. I did I did speak about that and I did also mention that TMZ had uh, footage of P. Diddy in Miami at the airport waiting for people to be released from customs questioning from his party and so he wasn't in Antigua but his plane a, a plane registered to him let's just say and we don't know if anybody was on it or not but yeah that was all over the news too
That's right. It was federal. This was Homeland Security raid. They only asked local law enforcement to assist. So the actual investigation, let's be clear, the ongoing investigation statement is coming from Homeland Security in, in Los Angeles, in Miami. And the warrant was issued at the request of New York, the Southern District of New York. Now that's where, because it was the Southern District of New York, this is where the this is where the assumptions are being made that it has something to do with the civil cases. No, well the civil it be the civil cases have all been filed in New York, and maybe that's where they got some of the information that led to criminal investigation. Possibly, yes. Hmm. Didn't P. Diddy punch Drake in the mouth back? At P. Diddy has punched. She's been in quite a few club fights, let's just say. But I do believe he did punch Drake. Yeah. And yes, you that is going to be a tag for a while now. Bad boy for life. Yes, that is a moniker of P. Diddy for sure. Under one of his names, Puffy, Daddy, Diddy, Puff Daddy, Sean Combs. Let's just call him Sean Combs because that's exactly who he is. Okay. Um, all right. All right. Let me just see if there was anything. Oh, hey, T. King. How are you? I hope you're feeling better, Shill. Okay. There we go. Well, that was that on P. Diddy. I've got two more. Two more. Yeah, I got to get done. It's going to be more than an hour, as you can see. We're already over an hour. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. That's kind of funny. I used to have a pair of puffy pants from back when he was a fashion designer. Yeah, he did dabble in that too, didn't he? Yeah, he did. $80. Yeah, that was that's a lot of money for a pair of pants back then yeah, when he was doing that. They said he did really well in the fashion, but you know, there's a lot. If you look into the lawsuits that involve Sean Combs, there was a lot. And a lot of them have to do with broken advertisement deals, uh, accusations of racism, uh, not portraying the product in the right way, not con you know, not uh, uh, actually following through with contract obligations. In a lot of the accusations that are made in these lawsuits have to do with his what they call inappropriate business activities. Okay. And well, part of Rodney Jones's uh, civil suit in several of the claims were made was that he did strong arm and threaten and do things like that in business a lot. Um, but actual seeing the evidence of it is another story. Like, you know, you can't like take what you read in a civil suit filing that hasn't even been answered yet, point by point or uh, gone through all of the, the questions and the uh, interrogatories that they answer back and forth, you know, uh, to say what's true, what's not true, what's a fact, what's not a fact, you know, here we go. None of that has actually even happened yet. So who knows? True. It's easy to be a bad boy when you're surrounded by bodyguards. Uh, that's a true statement. Yeah. And and one that people point out a lot. It's kind of easy to be tough when you're fully protected. Yeah. Well, I don't think. Anyway, which one would you like to go to next? Lovely chat. Would you like Carly Russell or Michelle Troconis next? Because uh, I'm going to move this along. Because when it comes to P. Do P. Diddy, like we don't know enough. We can speculate. And we are... It seems that most of you in the chat and those that I have talked to are also upset that the focus is on this, and yet there's so much else going on with human trafficking that they're just they're they're not. There's no raids going on. There's no charges being made. And uh, you know, it's just like you know, are you trying to get into the media like you're doing your job? Like it needs to be more than like some rapper business guy, you know? Yep. 
Uh, Darth, uh, when I talk about Dwayne Davis in regards to Tupac Shakur's homicide, in the fact that D Dwayne Davis, um, Keefe D, has been charged, um, I do have the FBI file on Tupac Shakur now, and I also um, have the statements um, from the recording of the proffer that, that Keefe D gave. And uh, let's just say this, P. Diddy was mentioned. Yes, he was. And he was very unhappy with Suge and Tupac uh, getting together and being a presence. Yes. And so there is a rumor that, yes, um, Puff Daddy may have requested that Tupac be eliminated or to become not a problem anymore. You know, but speculation again. Mm -hmm. But we'll hear more about that in Dwayne Davis's trial. Which, okay. All right, so we're going to go. I see that Liam said Carly Russell. So let's go to her. She was first on. Yeah, I'm, I'm very disappointed in the, uh, the decision not to give any jail time. Um, you know, she gave an apology today and... Uh, Okay. All right. Carly Russell was the woman, the young woman who staged her own kidnapping, um, abduction. Okay. She was missing for several days and caused a massive search. It was in the news. She then showed up. She gave no explanation. She made some story about looking for, a ch you know, trying to help a child on the side of the road and she was abducted. Okay showed up at her parents' house with this elaborate story, um, never really uh, came clean with anything, um, made a whole big hoax, wasted everybody's time in law enforcement. Um, an investigation had to happen. They had them searching for people that didn't even get, exist, okay? Um, this is what she looked like at her hearing the other day. Um, Carly, this was in Alabama, okay? Um, she had a plea hearing all along. She would, they finally investigated. Let's just like long story short. She gives, gives them this wild story uh, about these people that abducted her that, you know, that when she was trying to help a child and blah, they, now they're mid looking for a child. They're looking for abductors. Uh, like it was serious. There was a lot of volunteers. There was law enforcement involved. There was an investigation that had been done. It went on for days. Then she finally came clean. She gave a, a letter to her lawyer that came clean to them saying that no, and they, they very upset. They do an investigation. They check all of her documents. They find out that she was searching how to do this, um, that she was off. She never said who she was with, where she was with or anything about what had actually happened to her those two days. Okay. She never really said that, but she did like come clean that there was no abduction and that she was off by herself. In, it didn't really happen. It, they should stop looking for this person. Okay. Um, but Carly, Carly Russell, in it was charged with <laughs> with uh, false reporting in wasting their time. In at first she pled not guilty. Okay. But then at the plea hearing, you know, a couple of days before the plea hearing, she decided to go uh, guilty. She had two subpoenas. Uh, each one with a six-month sentence that could go um, uh, in regards to, you know, obstructions of an investigation, false reporting. Oh, yeah, she lied. Yeah, well, you know, men lie too, Darth. Don't get on that woman thing, you know, because uh, I would say that men lie a lot. Yeah. But anyway, Carly Russell had her plea hearing the other day. She received two suspended sentence, uh, six month sentences. And uh, a lot of people were upset about it um, because of how she purposely with intent had constructed this whole scenario. Well, she got two suspended six month sentences with 12 month probation, 100 hours of community service and a 17,000 restitution charge that she has to pay. Mm. But I 
you know, I I understand some of the disconcert that people have. I was I, I was offended, but by her suspended sentence. But then when I listened to what the judge had to say about it, in um, I'm going to give you a little video about that that I watched that had like kind of both sides of it. And then there's an article um, from CNN where the judge said, like he said, you know what? It's going to cost us more money to actually uh, put you in jail. And I want to cut the costs that you've already put on, you know, um, that you've already put on everybody in regards to this, you know, um, wh which I understand. But here's the other side of it. Okay, I'm going to play you a little clip now that I put together. This is um, the Hoover police chief. Um, his name is Nick Dersler, and he gave us he gave a press like a press statement right after her plea hearing. Yeah, I'm, I'm very disappointed. In the, uh, in the decision not to give any jail time. Um, you know, she gave an apology today. And uh, unfortunately, to, to me, it's like seven, eight months uh, late. Uh, I don't know why we didn't hear that uh, back in July. And um, it's just unfortunate. There were a lot of, uh, a lot of people, uh, I mean, the judge commented, not only uh, in, in our community, but across the nation, that were real concern for, for those uh, couple of days. Uh, the 17,800, whatever their restitution is not really uh, close to really what the restitution should be. And uh, bottom line, uh, there should be uh, consequences for your actions. Uh, it appears to me here the consequences are for the parents because uh, I would assume that they're the ones that are going to have to pay for this. But, uh, you know, the judge has spoken. I do want to thank the legislature. Uh, you know, the last press conference I gave, I talked about that this should be a felony. And uh, I think we're uh, headed to that uh, uh, that direction so hopefully if anybody uh, uh, does anything like this again then they'll be uh, prosecuted in a different manner but uh, again uh, we leave here uh, happy that it's over disappointed that uh, that there will be no uh, no jail time whatsoever could you give us a better figure as far as a ballpark amount the uh, the real figure should probably be in the 40s uh, 40s at least 40 to fifty thousand dollars for all the money that we spent how do you feel that we still don't know why yeah I mean, that's the deal you know we we uh, as as uh, as the, the state said, uh, we still today still don't know where she was during that period of time. Obviously, probably had help. We don't know who the help was. And uh, again, it, it, to me, it's a little slap on the wrist. Uh, pay, pay your money and, uh, and and go forward. And I just think this, I'm just a little, little disappointed in all that. I'd have felt better if they didn't want to give any jail time. Let's at least discuss where you were and, and, and find out what the circumstances uh, were. I mean, we talk about everybody's got mental illness today. And, and uh, you know, she's got uh, issues. Uh, Please get the help uh, that she needs, and hopefully she'll lead a, a good uh, good life from here on. When you were listening to her apology, did you feel that in her heart it was sincere? Yeah, I mean, I think I think she's apologized, and I, I think she obviously went through a lot uh, from, uh, uh, you know, there were a lot of people upset, and uh, I think uh, she and her family hurt. Yeah. So he's obviously... He's, he's obviously brings up some issues, you know. Oh, but first, Darth, now your comment makes sense to me because of the um, Believe All Women comment that is done by that campaign that I don't support at all. So I'll just want to say that because since I publicly said no about the uh, don't believe it, but yeah, I'm totally behind that. Like, don't believe anybody without due diligence and just believe all women just because they say so. I do not stand behind that. I think that those things need to be checked out in fairness for both sides, always, always, yeah. So I wanted to straighten that out because I don't want Darth to take a bad rap for something. He did not intend it to come out the way that I was interpreting it. So I wanted to correct that, you know. Mm. Yeah. No, it's not my inner, in, it, 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 I get it. I get it, though. But in regards to Carly Russell here, um. There's two sides of it. Like the judge also ordered that she was, you know, in her statement um, of apology in talking about her having, um, go, you know, going, having some mental health issues and actually seeing a therapist and so. But Carly Russell said, and I quote, 
I made a grave mistake while trying to fight through various emotional issues in stress. Now she's only 26 year, years, years old. Okay. She said, I am extremely remorseful for the panic, fear, and various range of negative emotions that were experienced across the nation. I want to specifically acknowledge and take accountability for the pain and embarrassment that I inflicted upon my family, my church family, friends, neighbors, community, and all those who were directly involved in search efforts for me. Okay. Now she gets supervised probation. I don't know where she's going to be doing her 100 hours of community service with the total bill for restitu restitu restitution sorry, to the city of Hoover, Alabama is $17,974.88. And the police chief himself says that's just not enough. That is just not enough. Um, that it was much more. And the reason that I'm bringing this one up is that although this, this judge actually, he says, like, you really should have, like, this was something, you know, this is something that you should take accountability for and there should be restitution. Because in her searches, let's be clear, she searched things like, do you have to pay for an Amber Alert? How much money um, do you have to take from a register without being caught? Okay. Uh, what, what charges for this? What charges for that? Like she actually looked up the whole process of what happens when somebody's reported missing or when you report things like this. Like she did it with great intent and she knew it was going to cost resources in money. Okay. And this was, you know, the part that gets a lot of people like really upset about it. Okay. So this Jefferson County Circuit Court judge, he, mm, he just said, Hey, I need you. You have to, as part of your probation to continue your therapies. I want to see notes that you're, you're continuing on. I want to see some evidence that you are still involved in healing these issues that caused you to do this. And we don't want to cost the court or the state, anyone, any more money in regards to this um and of like you know she did extend sincere apologies directly to the hoover police department and every other law enforcement agency and personnel for the position that she put them in she said wholeheartedly she did not intend any malicious intent but her searches do show intent um she may think they weren't malicious uh, based on what she was going through emotionally at the time but they did cause harm. They did cause harm to a lot of people, you know. Um, she's saying she's trying to pick up her pieces and restore her life. Um, and hopefully that they, um, they will see her um, pick up her pieces with grace and, and move forward. And, and that uh, she hopes to do well with being granted that she doesn't have to serve any time with the suspended sentences. Like she was appeasing to the judge, you know, um, both, you know, um, the police chief is just, as you heard, not very happy about it. Um, and in that light, um, he has actually called to legislation and there has been some movement into, in some States and I'm going to actually have to delve into Alabama a little bit more, but actually, there has been some movement in regards to false reporting of, of of claims against people, crimes. When you go to a police station and you you know you do an absolute false report to cover something that you did or to cause harm to another, that it should not be a misdemeanor. When you are engaging law enforcement and using resources and everything, they want to bump that up from a misdemeanor more towards a felony obstruction tampering with um with an investigation misleading an investigation causing a, a a false investigation these should have heftier penalties if like because it's becoming rampant there's more and more of it going on in our society right now and um mm. yes cause those yes it would liam because that is also a false reporting and that is very expensive and very dangerous. When it comes to swatting, that is horrific. And I do believe that there, there, there actually is working on legislation everywhere in regards to that being a much more serious crime. Yep. 
Dart says it should be a felony and you should be facing exactly the same amount of time as the accusations you might that might lead out. Oh, you mean like if you accuse somebody of something that like you get the chart? Like, I don't know if they could do that, but they, that would definitely, you know, might lead to people doing it a lot less if they actually had to pay the penalty for the crime they are accusing others for. And, and I agree. Maybe if there were actual consequences for this shit, people would stop doing it. I agree, Darth, and I'm hoping that more legislation moves forward, which is why I wanted to talk about Carly Russell, because I think it's a case that proves that whatever her reason for doing it, okay, it was wrong. And even though no one was technically hurt, she's fine. No one was killed. No one was injured. No one except the state suffered financial losses okay um they wasted a lot of time but when i say no one that doesn't take into account that all of these people concentrating on this false crime weren't paying attention to real crimes real victims and so there is a loss there and damage there done to real victims of crime because time was taken away from them. And how often do we hear the reports that we just don't have enough law enforcement officers? There's just not enough to go around to handle everything, to look into everything as, as, as much as they would. The time is something they are so short on. And what Carly Russell was guilty of was stealing time from those who needed it. Time and valuable resources I agree. I agree, Raker. It's like so reasonable, right? That it's too rational. They'll never do it. They'll never do it. You know, she says, I think that they should at least have to serve community service for a few years. Give states some of that money they had to foot for people like this. Exactly. They should be encumbered in inconvenience the way everyone was. They should have to drop their normal everyday life and do community service probation jump through hoops like they made others on a whim okay they enacted a system that has to follow certain protocols and expend certain energy money resources in time based on an allegation that's false based on the reporting and i, I think it does need to be really seriously clamped down on um because it is becoming <laughs> a little too easy and a little too just a slap on the wrist. Just a slap on the wrist. No. Mm. It, I agree. It is very uncommon to be reasonable and rational about these kind of things, like this conversation. So we're going to go on to the next one. In regards to Carly Russell, you know, I'm glad she's all right. I'm glad she's getting help for whatever her issue is. I can't imagine being in a state that you would have to do something like this for retention and not consider anybody else around you. But I do understand it. You know, people's mental health is a friable thing. And like, I could never put myself in someone else's shoes that way that's having an issue. I just think the consequences need to be a little more severe for her. It seems like, and as the police chief said she may not even be the one at 26 who pays this money back. She has parents that she lives with that she also put through this torment. I mean, and that drives me crazy that she did that to her people who love and care for her. Let alone what she calls the state and the victims that needed that time that she doesn't even know. But to people she knows who care about her, love about her, she caused this kind of pain. Mm. And I hope that her parents are not letting her forget about it. They, regardless of what you're going through, mm, the debt was a stickler right there. And I hope that they are not going to pay this fine for her. I hope they make her pay it from whatever job, get a second job, do whatever, to pay it penny by penny herself. I don't care how long it takes. But she needs to pay every penny of that sanctioned fine herself. That restitution 
needs to come from her. It is her responsibility and her accountability uh, to do that. In I and if even if her parents offer, I hope she has the common sense to turn it down and take it on the chin and do it. Mm, but I know we'll never hear anything about that. It's just in my mind that's what I'm going to picture. It makes me feel better that she has to pay every penny of that herself, and that it may not be that easy for her to do. You know. Well, all right. All right, the last one. And this one, I didn't cover this trial. I followed it personally myself, but I didn't cover it publicly out here on um on YouTube. In particularly because I came into it like kind of late and I had a lot of other stuff going on at the time. But okay. Oh. Oh, this one, mm. this one, Michelle Traconis was the girlfriend of Fotis Dulas, who was accused of murdering his wife, Jennifer, the mother of his five children. They were going through a divorce, custody hearing. It was getting kind of nasty. Michelle Trokonos lived with him, was his girlfriend at the time. Okay. She was convicted of, consp of uh, conspiracy. She, Fotis actually uh, unlived himself and didn't face charges. He wasn't around to face charges. Michelle Trokonos did. And she was found guilty of conspiracy. And not only conspiracy, but obstruction of the investigation and tampering with evidence. Guilty. Yeah. She was found guilty. She has other charges coming up that she just had a hearing for, an arraignment, I should say. It was an arraignment where she pled not guilty to actually putting up a sealed document in court a document that was in regards like a mental health evaluation that we used in the custody agreement between Jennifer and Fotis. And she actually is accused of putting it up on her laptop during the trial in 75 point font so that the cameras because this was a live stream trial, cameras could focus on it. Everybody behind her could read it. And actually, um, there was actually some reporting going on from some other news sites of other articles and stuff that she had put on. This was not the only time she did this. They actually had several other, two other times. She put up an article about a, a um, witness being uh, accused by a judge of uh, falsifying DNA evidence. She put that up while they were talking about DNA evidence with a witness. She put it up with the headline so that everybody behind her could see it as if she wanted the media to know that, you know, like she was making a statement, like he's lying. He could be lying. Like, you know, I, I'm innocent because that, that DNA is probably not my DNA. You know, all the people behind her, like in the courtroom, to get like some kind of media buzz. This is the accusation, okay, being made. But the fact that she had a document that is court sealed by two different judges because it is actually an evaluation that happens during custody cases, it's not even given to the participants. It is sealed by the court, private, and only and done in sealed, even the hearing for that. Uh, where they discussed that report that was done by a psychiatrist uh, evaluator um, for the family. And it was a family report. It was done on Jennifer and Fotis and the children. Everybody is interviewed, okay? Um, that was a sealed hearing in a sealed court document, okay? They, no one has, in these custody cases, nobody has access to this stuff. But Michelle Troconis has shown it on a laptop is accused of showing it on a laptop during her loud trial in big enough font for people to read sections of it sections of it that left no doubt what it was sections that said things like 
the word medication, the psychiatrist's name, the words borderline personality disorder. Um, she also showed an article about borderline personality disorder when another witness was up there, one of Jennifer Dulos's very good friends. Uh, she put up, you know, the article in big font. Now, 75 point font is huge. Would you agree? Like 75, it's huge. There's no doubt. Like what it, it, she's trying to show something if she puts it up like that. Okay. Uh, this this was one of the images from court that they're using, okay, that shows that if you're behind her, okay, you can see what's on her screen. And that's not even at 75 font, okay? Um, I'm not going to show anything to do with the article at all, okay? Um, but Michelle showed up in her hearing, and her hearing was pushed now back to uh, May 15th uh, for these contempt charges, okay? This is contempt of court. When it was discovered in the court, uh, it was apparently uh, Carrie Lynn Loft, which was one of Jennifer Dulos's very good friends, uh, noticed it on the screen, knew of the reporting from a conversation with Jennifer that the actual psych psychiatric evaluation had happened for the custody hearing and knew the doctor's name and actually saw that part of it and heard people talking about it, other people that had seen it talking about it in outside of court in in the vestibule or in another room um after uh, they went on break and so then she came back and she wrote a note to give it to the investigator to give to the prosecution of what she was showing on the screen to everyone uh in trying to entice is the accusation the media to pick up on it and to try to say things about jennifer's mental health and this that or the other thing which i don't understand because like you know, putting that out there is only uh, going to hurt the family and hurt the children in Jennifer's memory. And I realized that Michelle might have a chip on her shoulder because Fotis is no longer with her. Um, he is no longer around and uh, she was in a relationship with him. And she may feel a certain way about Jennifer because of the um, court case uh, in regards to custody of the children. But to purposely, with Jennifer not around, to put something up like that, to try to, like, that doesn't help her case in any way. This was seriously, just to me, a malicious, a malicious thing to do in the memory of someone who's no longer here to defend themselves. And that really looks bad. And the fact that it goes against two judges' orders to seal is a serious contempt charge. Serious. Okay. Um, now, mm, now there is, I had posted a link to something on Twitter, actually, in the description, which actually lists the charging warrant for the contempt charges. And it's a good read because it lays out exactly, um, exactly what, how she did it and what they, and how it happened and how they found out about it. You know what I mean? Like, did the whole thing. Um. Oh, that link is too big. Anyway, the link is in the... um. Oh, here. Maybe this will do it. Oh. Why is this link not posting? Mm. Oh, it's just, like, so big. It, it's just, like, okay. Let's try this. All right, this is a shorter one. Sorry about that. Tech issues, you know me. Eh. Hmm. I agree. Another idiot who thinks that crime should be tried in the court of public opinion rather than in an actual court. Yep. Yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. in the odd it's not against the law so i can do it actually it is against the law this one is against the law absolutely and also the reporting of false 
you know, making false reports is against the law. It just is a minor and it needs to come up as far as, you know, the penalties for it when you, when you are found guilty of it. This contempt of court also, uh, like what she's doing here, this is definitely, first of all, the judge, when it was brought to his attention, first of all, the, the investigator gave a note from uh, Jennifer Dulas' friend, Karine uh, uh, um, Luft. She put the note on there on what was happening, gave it to the investigator sitting behind the prosecutor. The prosecutor then read it. They conversed a little bit, and then they wanted to bring it to the judge. They had a sidebar, but the judge was so good about it. First of all, the judge, if you're doing a contempt of court on another judge's ruling in your court, you can't actually charge her. Somebody else has to actually charge her for it, okay, because it wasn't contempt of anything that he had ordered in his court, okay? It was from other judges. So when they came, when he, when they did the sidebar, nobody knew what was going on. The judge said, hey, but when he came back from it, he didn't miss a beat. He went right back to the testimony with the jury. So the jury had no idea any of this went well. He was so cool. And the reason I mention it is because I was so impressed because that's how it should be. He did not violate anything in his courtroom to give Traconis in particular anything to appeal at all in regards to this scenario. So if her whole thing for shenanigans was to get this all thrown out or to have a new trial over again, um, she's going to lose because this judge is extremely sophisticated and he knows what he's doing. And he was so calm and so collected. I'm sure he was completely offended by what was going on, but you would never tell. And the point being, the jury could never tell. They knew something happened. They knew they talked about it in sidebar. For all they know, it was about this um, telecommunications uh, polls and tracing where cell phone communications come from, like the locations, like that's what they were talking about at the time when this was discovered. Okay, so for all they knew, they were talking about the map or that the prosecution didn't agree with something that he said or whatever, and they took it up privately, you know? Yeah. But I'll tell you, but 76 point font, she meant for it to be seen. What her motivations are were absolutely malicious. There was a lot during this trial in regards to after the guilty plea, the sister actually talking bad about the children. Like, I don't see why attacking someone's children when you're in a relationship is, is appropriate in, in any manner whether Fotis was here or not, whatever she feels about Jennifer personally, Michelle should have kept to herself in her family too. Well, to attack other family members that are grieving over the loss of Jennifer, well, she's not looking good. Um, she did not look good during most of the trial, to tell you the truth. Her demeanor, her uh, wanting attention, her um, mother mouthing things to the jury, making comments, trying to get the media involved in her defense. This is all eh, speculation on my part yet. Yeah, it's what I saw. I watched it as a viewer, not as somebody that was going to bring it to YouTube and took salacious, no, you know, took very precise notes, marking all the salacious details and everything, like to make a big deal of it. But to say that I was offended during most of this trial with her actions in the defense, yeah, I was. Yeah, I really was. It didn't look good. And so if I was on that jury, she did not, like, I was feeling things. I have to look at the facts, yes. But I was having some feels about her whole attitude about everything. And then to find this out. Now, the jury did not know anything about this. So it has nothing to do with the guilty verdict that they laid down on the six charges that she is guilty of, okay? Um, they, you know, that jury you know, came forth in two days with uh, the, with con all six charges and they were conspiracy to commit murder, conspiracy to commit tampering with physical evidence, tampering with the physical evidence, conspiracy to commit tampering with physical evidence in another event, uh, May 29th, uh, tampering with that physical evidence. So there were two events, May 24th and May 29th, to where she is actually had a conspiracy with Fotis to 
tamper with the evidence and actually did the tampering with the evidence. And she was guilty on both. Okay, both events and both charges. And then second degree, hindering of prosecution. Misstatements that she had to take back during her during the investigation, during her interviews, false reporting in regards to where what she was doing and where she was at certain times. That's hindering of prosecution. Um, she was not very forthcoming in her interviews. Let's put it that way. In they caught her. Okay. Um, this one bothered me because this kind of shenanigans. First of all. If it's a sealed document and you release it, that's a very high offense. And I don't know what they're going to be able to find her with, but it, it's got to be massive. I hope that it is massive, okay? Um, because that just can't happen. Like, you know, the courts have to be able to seal things for non-prejudicial uh, reasons in both parties, okay? Um, they continued her hearing uh, to May 15th. And I want to hear more about what they're going to actually do about it. Okay. Um, her family, Traconis's family and friends still are out there advocating her innocence um, and whatever in regards to it. But regards to the contempt of court, I don't know how they're going to be able to say she's innocent of that because they have it court recorded and documented that she but she did it right there. Okay. And also her own attorneys didn't have the whole document. The one attorney said it, I've only had four pages of it and it was in actual physical pages. It wasn't like a, a link or, 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 or a PDF or anything like that. They were actually physical pages of it and that she never gave them to Michelle Troconis. Part of it is how did she get this? Okay. All right. And how were the attorneys involved and did they know anything about it? Based on the statements the attorneys are ma making, they, it, they're they kind of inferring that Michelle did this all on her own. They, they never gave her any of this. Okay. Um, they are not, the, they are not commenting on it specifically. Okay. Um, the judge in this case, Alec Hernandez um, said that, actually conferred with the state's attorney uh, who I believe on that day it was Elizabeth Morin in Robert Frost. Uh, they actually uh, spoke with the judge and said that they would meet prior to the next court date with Michelle Troconis and her attorneys uh, to try to no negotiate a resolution to this matter in instead of actually having it go forward to a trial. Okay. Um, you know, Based on her March 1st conviction, um, this can only go forward. What would happen, though, is that she could get another. I mean, the all right, the penalty for this is not strict enough. Uh, hold on to your seats. $500 in six months. Yeah. Two judges ordered that sealed, a sealed hearing in a child's custody case children's custody case in family court. We all know those documents are sealed. Okay. The fine, $500, six months. Now, granted, that six months could not be served concurrently. It would be added onto her sentence. So she gets like 30 years. It'll be 30 years plus six months. But still, the damage to Jennifer's reputation from what would miss and what she tried to do in that court, the flagrant disregard for law and law procedures, judicial procedure, judicial weight. When they say it's sealed, it's sealed. It's not sealed until you want to use it. It's not sealed oh, until you think better. It's sealed. It, I, I was just livid when I read how small that penalty was. And again, I'd say I hope there's legislation to bolster those up and allow judges to have more freedom in the penalties for contempt charges, contempt of court charges, like more penalty, more sentencing, you know, based on what is actually done and make it more in more degrees. Okay. No.
the prosecution said they did have access to the report, but they didn't share it with anyone. Okay. If she is convicted of contempt, she'll no longer get credit for her for any uh, time served while she's waiting sentencing on the conviction of March 1st, which isn't going to happen until May 31st, by the way. And her bail was increased to $6 million from the $1.6 or $2 million that it was. Okay. Um, she'll no longer get credit towards her eventual sentence for charges she was convicted of at trial if she's convicted of this contempt. So it's a big deal for her. Okay. She could lose all these months that she's been sitting in jail. She's in a new, she's in a York Correctional Institute uh, because she has not raised the $6 million bail. Mm. She's also scheduled to appear in state superior court on April 10th in connection with the conviction because she is attempting to argue motions filed by her trial attorney, John Schoenhorn, requesting an acquittal in a new trial. But I've got to look up that document. I can't even imagine what happened that she would get a new trial. This particular contempt charge is not going to play out because the judge handled it perfectly. Okay. So I don't know. I don't know where they're going to get with that. There hasn't been much as far as evidence that has been tossed. Okay. It just, I don't see where they're going to be able to, but we'll find out about that in April. Okay. All right. So also the judge that actually sealed the report was in Stanford family court. And that was judge Donna Heller. So like this was actually a violation of her court order uh, that's going for it. Not the judge in regards of the trial that she just had for his conspiracy of murder. Okay. Now, one of her attorneys has meant that he was given the report as part of his discovery in trial, but he was not allowed to show it to his client, and he said that he never did. He contended that he did not give Trafonis the report, you know, but there was an investigator for the prosecution conducting an investigation into whether Trafonis had violated the sealing order concluded and that she had pulled it up the pages of that report and it could be seen. They did the investigation and they have already concluded ahead of time that it was the actual report that was on her laptop. And based on that investigation, she was charged with, by warrant with contempt of court. And according to that warrant, which you can read in that Twitter link, each of the four pages, okay, Carrie Loft, who was the friend that I told you about, you know, she said that she pretty much based on what Jennifer had told her, she thought it was. She said she had never actually seen that report. However, the investigator said that when he saw it, it actually, there was an in inspector, Christopher, uh, I'm going to mangle this name, Gio Ieli, who investigated the allegations. He re reviewed all the video footage of the trial and confirmed that Traconis had displayed portions of the sealed Dulos report on her computer scene. Actual pieces of it mirrored the language on page 50 of the sealed custodial report exactly. It was the actual report. Um, there's been a lot back and forth in regards to it, but if they've already had the investigation and pulled all of the files and they can confirm it, I'm wondering what they're going to negotiate with before May 15th. But I'm hoping that she just pleads out and doesn't waste any more time for the court. And that they do. I just wish that it would be more than six months or $500. But me wishing isn't going to make that happen. Actually, hopefully, these affronts and people talking about the injustice of stuff like this actually will help move the legislation along, you know. And it's my point of this whole two-hour episode of True Crime tonight was to speak out against egregious violations and penalties that are too soft for these affronts against law enforcement and what they try to do in justice for victims, okay? Laws sometimes need to be stiffer. They don't get 
They don't get to be stronger until the people speak up and say this is wrong. And still law enforcement agencies themselves complain about it. Like the Hoover police chief, you know, until we actually start speaking about it more, like that's just awful that they get to walk away that they're like, we just had a huge trial, okay, for Hannah Gutierrez, all of that expense. For her to get a five thousand dollar penalty in eighteen months, seriously, I can see why families would be upset. I can, I really can. Hmm. Let me just do a couple of questions, and then we're gonna finish up. I don't, I don't know, Darth. I guess they put in a magic number, but that's the one they keep throwing around, 76 point font. I couldn't either. I did the same thing you did. It comes up 72 or 84, so I don't know what they're talking about. Okay. You know, Liam, this is the thing. She got it from someone. I want to see the person who gave her a sealed document get prosecuted. So does a lot. That has been the common... Uh, Thing that comes up every time somebody is speaking about this they say yeah what well, how did she get it and that's where we need to also look because that needs to stop whoever did that whoever did that mm. oh probably not uh, Rocket Couch, you may post it, of course, and I hope you'll put it in the Discord, in the bingo room. You can post it here for Prosperity, and they can go back and play based on the episode if you'd like. But I am wrapping up in the next couple of minutes. And I do appreciate your efforts in making one, because I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. Mm. Oh, good question there, Mark. But that's going to be for another episode. Oh, how are you with the Trump bond being reduced and him having 10 days to meet that bond? Mm. I'm going to say something very unpopular. I understand why they did it. Because this particular defendant screams so loudly about being treated unfairly that I have watched tongue-in-cheek, biting my tongue, as the whole justice system bends over backwards to give him preferential treatment because that's exactly what I think this was. No one else would have got that deal. No one else would have went from billions of dollars down to a millions, okay, or given the extent of time. He's had a lot of time. He has multiple suits. I guess they're just bending over backwards to prove that they're not treating him unfairly. And in essence, they end up overly giving him things they would not give others. I don't think the justification listed in giving it was very well sounded either. Um, that's my opinion on it. I'm going to do a review of the Trump cases shortly. Um, there's a lot going on. <laughs> it is a lot. It's not very popular. And again, it takes me weeks to answer all of the DMs that I get in regards to it. And um, so I'm not looking forward to that part of it. But there is a lot to cover on it. And I will be doing a show, if not this week, then next week. We do have the Chad Daybell trial coming up. April 1st starts jury selection. I'm not so sure I'm actually going to be uh, streaming jury selection. I think that, in my personal opinion, the jury selection, the jury process in itself is such a sacred thing. I don't really see it to be beneficial to be filmed in any way and out there. It should be private. It should be behind doors. We should not know who they are. They can just, you know, do what they got to do. The questions, everything. I don't think that's something we need to sit and watch tit for tat. Uh, I feel very strongly about protecting that process. I get very offended when anything happens in regards to the jury process, the whole thing with the Murdoch trial just made me crazy. And oh, by the way, Becky Hill resigned. What? Like, why did she even have her position still while she's up on charges in an investigation? She should have been suspended. But anyway, she resigned. 
that's what I'm going to say about that until another one. But um, what's the matter there, Rocket? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, the link is coming out weird. Okay. If you are sick of people flouting court procedure and being disrespectful of the process of law, you shouldn't watch some sit spouting the idiocracy of judges. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, they're, they're even worse. I get that. Um, you know. But, hey, sometimes the justice system works. Like, Chile de Castro is in jail. <laughs> yeah. It didn't work. Yeah. The judge said, Dad, you're doing this all just for your whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Serve your time. Yeah, whatever. Hmm. Okay, thank you, Rocket. Let's let's try to get a we'll we'll work on the link. Thank you for trying, though. I appreciate your efforts. For on that, everybody, we are going to say good night. Thank you for hanging out for all two hours of this. Uh, if you have any questions on anything that we talked about tonight, the five or, or anything else, please hit the back of the video. Comments are always answered. I do enjoy the questions. I'm here to try to help get the information out. I know tonight was a little bit more about my opinion, more so on things, but I do feel strongly about some of this legislation that I'm happy to see coming forward, some things that need to be tightened up. And this is why I do this. This is where my interest lies. I'm not a lawyer, but I'm fascinated with this process and I always have been. And I do like to see things change, especially in the right direction. In certain legislation in regarding to make sure that people show up for their sentencing, you know, in making sure that laws have specific wording that don't give loopholes, okay? And we need to actually firm up some of these penalties that are involved in people that are doing contempt of court, filing false quarters, are actually spitting in the face of actual judicial process, which... I mean, come on, we're all Americans in our actual foundation of our country is on this process, due process, okay? And a little respect, a little respect. I have a lot of respect for the system. It's not perfect. We all know it's not, you know? Just like life is imperfect and very unfair. Shit happens. You know, the job, the, the, all we can do as humans in, in a society that actually wants to do better for the greater good, is to keep looking at it, keep saying where it can be changed and improved and moving it forward. And the only thing I can do about that is keep talking about it and vote. <laughs> Hopefully you all will too. All right. On that, that's my soapbox for the night. <laughs> I will see you all. I have much more true crime coming for the week. Um, you, I know I've got one coming out on Thursday. I may be doing some, if I can wing it together, I will try to get everything together for Trump this Wednesday. If not this Wednesday, then definitely next Wednesday will be the Trump case reviews, all the cases, a little bit about every single one of them, bringing it all up to date. But on that, I would just like to say thank you all for being here. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, you know, you know, I would like to to see more people interested in in and see more comments on the back and address them as I can. And like I said, I'm available. There's other cases you want to talk about. You know, hit the back of a, a video and or send me a DM. On that, everybody have a great night.